clear a call this morning. This is going to be a fun half hour. Hope you'll uh, enjoy it as much as I'm going to. I can tell it's just going to be fun, you know? Well, we should be switching through very quickly, trying to get a hold of uh, Dodge Butler. We've dialed the number out in California, and uh, I think we're, we're, we're going through right now, aren't we? Got anybody on the line? Hello? Hello, hello. Hello, is this Dawes? No, no, no. This is Percival Pickles. I'm Dawes Butler's personal discount butler. Yes. Um, he's here. <clears throat> he's well, biting his fingernails. He's so worried that you wouldn't call, you see. Just a moment. I'll call him. All right, Percival. Thank okay. you. Hello. Hello. Hi, this is Dawes. Hi, Dawes. Oh, yeah. How are you doing with the help? Oh, well, as he says, he's discount. Uh, I <laughs> save a few dollars on him, but uh, we don't have too great a relationship. He resents the fact that he has to answer the phone or do menial things like <laughs> helping me, you know. <laughs> I but understand. he's cheap, and I can't. Well, well, I'm satisfied, put it that way. Good help is hard to find even in Beverly Hills, huh? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a pleasure to talk with you. You're a man of, uh, I don't know, thousands of voices and have, have been in the business for a long time. I found out that you actually grew up in Illinois. Oh, yeah. I went to school in Oak Park and uh, outside of Chicago, and I started my uh, nightclub routine when I was about 17 or 18 in Chicago, playing Harry's New York Bar, and which probably doesn't exist anymore, in the Blackhawk Restaurant, the uh -huh. Chicago Theater, you know. Since you were born in Toledo, but... Born in Toledo, and when I was four, we went to Chicago. Yeah. <clears throat> kind of a shy person. I've heard that before. Many people who become very uh, active in theatrics sometimes are very shy down deep. Yeah, well, I'm not very good at uh, so-called small talk. As long as I know my subject and so forth, I'm okay. But uh, I've never been a big one for parties. I don't mix too well. I don't know why. There's a sort of an intimidation that I had as a kid which has never completely left me. And I guess that's why I wanted to entertain. It was like, if I can do something to make them laugh, they'll like me, you know? Mm -hmm. Or if you're some... Or whatever it was, it turned into a good career. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say. You have done the voices. Let me uh, just go through some of these. Huckleberry Hound. Mm -hmm. Interesting thing. For years, we had a black and white set, and I watched Huckleberry Hound. Finally, we got a color set, and I said, there's something wrong with this. Huckleberry Hound is blue. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know. I, I, see, I, that was... Um... I, I think that animator must have had a big Saturday night or Sunday night. And he'd come in and he said, you got to paint Huck. <laughs> and I was going to be some, you know, down-to-earth kind of color. <laughs> and he painted, he painted me what he painted me. 
<laughs> and it was just kind of embarrassing. Yeah, I think Jimmy Carter copied his voice off a of Huckleberry Hound, didn't he? I think he did, too. Except <laughs> I'm, I, a Huckleberry, I'm really from around North Carolina, and he's kind of deep style. I see. So it's a little different, but <laughs> our demeanor is similar. Yogi Bear. Hi, this is Yogi Bear. I'm smarter than the average you-know-what. <laughs> and I'm out to get every picnic basket that uh, was ever packed. I don't know if you can do all the... I don't know how you switch voices so quickly, Dawes. That's amazing. Well, I think basically what it is, uh, Ken, is that they're characters. They're not voices. Uh, that is, when I think of Yogi or Huck or any of these things, I almost see them in the round. And there's bone and flesh and marrow, and I use my chest and my diaphragm and the resonating chambers for certain things. Uh, it's almost like a carpenter's uh, tool chest. Mm -hmm. And all the components, all the things that end up as a voice come out of the movement of the body. When I'm doing a recording or something, my whole body is as active as if I was in front of an audience. That's funny. I've seen and some... that's what makes the voice come out with the density that it has. I see. In fact, they said that you were really good at the physical kind of impressions while some of your other friends were doing more of the vocal stuff. That's amazing. Because it really helped your vocalization then later on. Oh, it has to. You see, <clears throat> you take even going back to Yogi Bear, uh, he's an eight-foot bear, and I'm a five-foot-two human being. And to get a bigger sound, I put my shoulders back, which makes the drum tighter, you know, mm -hmm. on my chest. So it's like, hey, this is Yogi Bear. Yay! <laughs> you know, and you have the spread vowel and, and all that energy just flowing through. I've always had a question I wanted to ask Yogi Bear, and that is when you were catching for the Yankees, no, wait a minute. That was another Yogi Bear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's right. He stole it from me. <laughs> <laughs> you did Mr. Jinx and Dixie, Augie Doggy, Snagglepuss, Quick Draw McGraw, and uh, Bob... Howdy, I am Quick Draw McGraw, the world's fastest gun. Now if Doss Butler is using his jaw, that's the way you get the sound of a, a big horse head. <laughs> <laughs> this is Baba Louie. And I gotta look out for Quick Draw, because sometimes he make a snap judgment. <laughs> and we don't like a snap judgment. So I take care of him. <laughs> Super Snooper, Blabbermouse, Elroy Jetson. Now, is that, uh, is that tough to do? Here's a kid. Well, that to me is one of the most interesting characters I've ever done. I've done a bunch of kid characters. Usually it's the same basic voice, and I do dialects uh, to give it a personality. Uh, but it, it's to put yourself back in time, because all acting to me should be using subtext, uh, fancy words. It's to really uh, hypnotize yourself into the fact that you are that person, and then supposedly it'll come out realistically. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> if I can do Elroy at uh, 8 o'clock in the morning or 8.15. He's, uh, Elroy's like a, you know, a nine-year-old kid, and it's been 22 years, you know, since, since we dated Jetson. Uh, and I'm still, uh, I'm still nine years old. Hey, that's fantastic. But, you know, I heard about a new word. I got to ask Judy what it means. It's called puberty. <laughs> <laughs> Been through that, I bet, many times. <laughs> 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 about nine o'clock in the morning, the boy starts changing, maybe. Yeah, that's right. Wally Gator and... Uh, and yeah, Wally Gator is also very ups and downs, you know what I mean? A lot of energy. The diaphragm is going back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. See, we're just listening to the voice now, and, of course, we're all getting visual images of what's happened because we've oh, had yeah. a... Well, you see, that's another thing. You have to believe it. Um, uh, any kind of presentation, the audience should never have the idea that the lines were memorized, that they're being read. It sounds to an audience as if you're just ad-libbing it. You're just saying it. it it's what I call unnatural naturalness. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? It's controlled. You have technique. You finish your consonants. You articulate. You enunciate. And yet, with all, you get the feeling. For instance, if I was doing like a New York cab driver, uh, I wouldn't get too sloppy with it because I still want to un you to understand what I'm saying. You know, like, I was over there, I was, I was double parked, this guy comes out, he gives me a lot of fancy stuff, you know. He's going to come back. He never came back. He never paid me, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I'm still trying to make it articulate. <laughs> yeah. You see? That's, that's right. I guess and that, that applies to theater as, as well as anything we're talking about here. Absolutely. It, right down the line, it's... Uh, uh, acting is acting, theater is theater, whether it's cartoons or, or Shakespeare, you know. Mm -hmm. We want uh, realism, I guess, but uh, real life sometimes doesn't play as well as theater. Well, not only that, theater. but a lot of times directors will talk about real life, and to me what they're talking about is dull people. 
Uh, if you do things without too much expression, you don't do much to words, this and that, so and so. And yet the people that fascinate me are like checkers in the supermarket or tellers in the bank or a cab driver, as I said. Uh, just everyday people. Uh, the way they talk, the way they express themselves, the repetition of certain adjectives. This is what makes characters, and I like people to be outgoing, you know? Mm -hmm. I and guess that's true. Most of my characters are full of energy. Yeah, you wouldn't want to really watch real life portrayed on stage if everybody just sat around in a chair and watched television on stage. Yeah, and as I say, there's a lot of people in real life that are very volatile. Yeah. They're not all laid back, you know? And those are the ones that make uh, make for the interesting characters. Like well, you, you see, in the old days of the great of the great character comedians like Ned Sparks and and Edward Everett Horton, whom I worked with on the Factory Fairy Tales, uh, they had a personality that was so intense that they could do picture after picture after picture and do themselves, and they were always welcome. People always loved them. Mm -hmm. But there was a lot of density in their character. You know, Dawes, there's something we got to talking about that the other day. The really great comedians always seem to play themselves over and over. And nowadays, people are afraid of being typecast, aren't they? Uh, to a great extent. About the only one who really gets away with acting uh, and going into different things is Albert Finney. Every, every part he does, you know, in England, mm -hmm. seems to be a different makeup, different walk, different everything. Alec Guinness, uh, Peter Sellers, uh, they were stepping in and out of basically their own character as a root. But, uh, but the ones who go and get up and do the same character... They don't exist anymore. No, I mean, you're... And those are the ones we remember for some reason. The Laurel and Hardys, the W.C. Fields, the Marx oh, Brothers. Oh, yeah. Ab absolutely. Uh, but hopefully things go full cycle sometimes. Yeah. Well, you've established these characters, although you keep coming up. How many voices do you do? How many different ones? Well, as I say, it, it's more than voices. It's characters because, for instance, very quickly with the, with the little voice, like with the Elroy voice, Oh, like that seems about like that. And I'm super snooper with the same voice, really, but it's more juicy. Mm. And Augie Doggy has a tremolo, and he loves his dear old father of the year. You know? <laughs> All the same character. Uh, Baba Louie is like this, and he talks to Quickstraw, yeah. and he's very fond of him. And another thing, there's a great relationship between these characters. They like each other. And you try to project that warmth, you know? Mm -hmm. You conduct what you call a sensitivity workshop, don't you? That's right, yeah. Well, you work with students, and uh, I love this, the love of words. Absolutely. I, I, well, I'm a writer, too, and my first ambition was to be a cartoonist and a writer, and my only subject in school that I liked was English, and uh, and so I, I write a lot of stuff for my workshop. Freeberg and I wrote a lot of stuff together and so on. But uh, I love words, and I love what you can do with them. And, uh, you know, when you ad-lib them, you, you put a stress on a certain word, and sometimes if you read it, you would just say it. Mm -hmm. And that's always my credo, that, that, that it all starts with the words. And uh, One little word, I suppose, can make an, uh, an, a big difference, really, in, in the way a well, sentence sure. is structured. I mean, it's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know, word shaping, I call it. Word word molding. It's, it's like sculpting, you know. And, and it takes study. It, uh, to come up with a good performance is like studying your music, so you play it well. Yeah. You know where the notes are. You have been the voice of Captain Crunch. Oh, yeah, well, that's one of my favorite characters. He's very laid back, you know, very laconic. And uh, I've done him for, well, 15 years now. Almost 20 years. <laughs> Almost 21 years. <laughs> I love the way you just get into these characters, and I guess maybe that's what we talked about here. Well, it's because it's a part of my psyche. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I sort of, I, I got a, went to the, the thrifty mart of acting, and I got a whole deal of these people. Yeah. Well, I again, got 15 psyches. here again, it's not just trying to make a voice. It's it's actually getting into a character, so you respond like that character, no matter. You know, my shoulders are moving when I do the captain. If you if you held my hands behind my back, I probably couldn't do it mm -hmm. because his hands are going around in an aimless sort of way, and he's. Uh... You're one of these guys. If if they could talk fast enough, you could fly, right? <laughs> That's right, yeah. <laughs> I sort of like that too. I think it's 19 after 10 o'clock. Do you have a question for Dawes Butler? This is a gentleman who is. Been turning out some terrific work for so many years. I don't want to put an age on you, but you go back with Freeberg, and as we said, with Jay Ward, who's just come up with some terrific stuff. I remember uh, Fractured Fairy Tales. Oh, I love that. Aesop show. and Son, and he did uh, Fractured Flickers. I don't know if you worked on that show no, with Hans Conrad. That was Hans Conrad. Yeah. Another great friend. And George of the Jungle and uh, Super Chicken. Those were all I, Jay I did Ward's. I heavies on most of those. Did you really? 
Yeah, Bill did most of the, Bill Scott did all the leads, and June did the little girlfriends. And June three, yeah. Uh, but the Fractured Fairy Tales and the Aesop and Son, I worked with Charlie Ruggles on Aesop and Edward Everett Horton on Fractured Fairy Tales, and they were a pure delight. Well, you talk about good writing, that was cream. It was wonderful stuff. Kids could enjoy it, but if you became an adult, you can still look back and say, my gosh, I miss so much. Yeah. There's a lot more here than meets the eye. That's right. But, but Jay, uh, he had some of the best writers in town, and out of his stable came writers who are now big producers and whatever. He, he had Roosevelt's talent for getting good people around him. Let's uh, break for a commercial. We'll be right back, and we'll take some phone calls. That'd be terrific. Dawes Butler is on the line. The biggest show in town is Huckleberry Hound for all you guys and gals. The biggest clown in town is Huckleberry Hound with all his cartoon pals. It's Huckleberry fun, it's for everyone. So come on, gather around. Get yourself all set, turn up your TV set for Huckleberry Hound. That oh so merry, Huckleberry Hound. been saving my money to buy you a waffle cone sundae from TCBY Yogurt. It's healthy, and the waffle cone is made in the store fresh, and it's all natural. And if you get a waffle cone sundae, they put your favorite topping with whipped topping and sprinkles on it. And TCBY Yogurt is 96% fat-free and low in calories. I think it's a fine idea, son. We'll get two waffle cone sundaes, and I'll pay works every time. The delicious waffle cone and waffle cone sundae. All the pleasure, none of the guilt. Only from TCBY, the country's best yogurt. Thanks, Mom. That was great. Works every time. Located at Watterson Place between Garcia's and Kinko's. New hours are 11 a.m. till 11 p.m. seven days a week. We have Dawes Butler on the line. We should mention, Dawes, that uh, the Jetsons are back on the air again. That's right. You know, 41 new shows, and they're mixing the old shows with it. And uh, I think it's just absolutely delightful, especially because we've got the same cast. I mean, Janet Waldo, and Penny Singleton, Mel Blanc, George O'Hanlon, Don Messick. Uh, you know, it's just absolutely marvelous. The first show we did was like, well, there was a lot of kissing and hugging going on. Yeah, I bet. Very glad to see each other, and... Uh, well, it had that camaraderie that show people have, you know. Yeah. Let's take a phone call or two. You're on the air okay. with with Dawes. Do you have a question? Yeah, I do. Um, first of all, this is like a trip down memory lane. I think it's wonderful um, because I was growing up when he was in his doing his thing with all these different uh, characters. But a few couple questions. One is, have has Dawes? Have you ever worked with Mel Blanc? Mel Blanc? Yeah. Oh yeah, I worked with Mel for thirty years. <clears throat> I worked on things out at Warner Brothers with him, and then. Uh, I did a thing called, uh, let's see, uh, uh, Lippy the Lion, uh -huh. and he was the, I forget what his name was on that, but he was down uh, here, won't be gone, and that kind of a thing that Mel does, and of course on the Jetsons, and, uh, and I worked with Mel for years, he's on commercials and so on. In fact, you just mentioned, guy. yeah, you just mentioned his name, working with the Jetsons? Huh? You just mentioned the fact that Mel does work with the Jetsons, doesn't uh, he? No, Mel Blank, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, he does Spacely. And when I'm doing Cogs, Cogswell Cogs and he's doing Spacely, we sit across the room and glare at each other, you know. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for the call, sir. Okay, thanks. Appreciate it. Are you still there? Yeah. you have a question? Yeah. Okie doke. On the uh, Fractured Fairy Tales, we were sitting around the other night trying to think of what the wizard says. He goes something like, Tweedle, 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 Dom, time for this one to come home. <laughs> How does that go? I, well, gee, I, you know, we do so many of these. We did about a hundred of those things, and... Uh, it's hard to recall them to mind. A couple of things I remember, the writing, as I said, was so creamy. There was one thing that I loved. Uh, the king turned into Captain Crunch later. It was the same character, in effect, the voice. And he had one line that I thought was pure wonder, where he said, Oh, evil sorcerer, don't change my daughter into a frog. Change her into a Mercedes so I can enjoy her. <laughs> you know, was that kind of material. Yeah. Go ahead, sir. I'm sorry. Okay, that's, that's all I had. Thanks a lot. Okay. Okay, thanks. You didn't work with Rocky and Bullwinkle, did you? Uh, no, the, he was, I don't know what it is. It, it, you know, you get slotted out here. I think Joe knew that I was very versatile, 
And on some of their little four-minute attraction fairy tales, I do as many as four or five characters, you know. Yeah. There's... And page to page, and uh, he just liked me in that uh, capacity. And then he he loved the, uh, you know, the prince. who was such a simp, you know, with was, was Rapunzel. Uh, he was a wonderful character. June and I, of course, and Bill had worked together for many years. Mm-hmm. We just enjoyed ourselves, that's all. <laughs> such a dummy, really. <laughs> I love it. There's one, I just happen to think of Rocky and Bullwinkle because there's one episode where Bullwinkle is forecasting the weather with his bunion. <laughs> and uh, he's, they ask him what the forecast is. It looks like a tornado for Bloomington, Illinois. Oh, yeah, really? That plays real well here, you know. Oh, that's terrific. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a question? Yeah, I have a question and a request. First of all, Dawes, do you have a character that's favorite to do? And second of all, uh, is Snagglepuss there in your house right now? I was wondering if we could hear from him. Oh, yeah, well, uh, I, I, I really can't name a favorite. I love Yogi Bear, Huckleberry Hound, Elroy, uh, Captain Crunch. It, it's really difficult. Uh, but Snagglepuss is here. Let me see. Snagglepuss? Kevin Smirgatroyd, what's going on? Why am I not in the forefront? I'm the best actor in the group. Come on. Let me open my mouth. Let me regale you. <laughs> He's a regaler. <laughs> Sir, does that answer your question? Yeah, but ask Snagglepuss to leave the stage, would you? That's it. Stage telephone. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Okay. <laughs> All right, 829-2345 is our number. You have some fans out there, you know that, Doss? Well, that's terrific. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, it, believe me, I, uh, I've had a fun career, and, and even in my workshop, I have people in their 30s and so on, so that grew up on this stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of you guys that I talk to, uh, you know, remember all these things. And it's like being babysitter to the world. It's really terrific. It's a yeah. very happy business. Do you have a question? Uh, just a quick, quick comment. Uh, I grew up with um, all these characters, too, and uh, it's just nice to listen to the program and reminisce and how, uh, how really funny they were uh, in contrast to what the kids have nowadays with all the uh, space cadets and, and video robots and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. The characters were characters. They were lovable. Oh, yeah, really great. The kind... well, as I say, too, I think one of the things that Bill Hannon and Joe Barbera uh, liked about me, and the reason I worked for them so much, I guess, was a combination of two things, was the energy and the heart and the trying to give realism to something that was drawn on paper and not to consider it just a cartoon or just a, uh, to use the expression in a derogatory way, a kid show, they were like family shows it was like to get the family together so the kids liked it their mothers liked it their dads you know Mm -hmm. they could all sit around and watch it and enjoy it and i think we accomplished that you know sir thank you for calling you bet the the flintstones really resembled the old honeymooners didn't they? oh definitely yeah very funny very popular show that was uh, that was on in the evening, as I recall. I think it came out on Friday night, didn't it, when it first made its I debut? I think so. Actually, the thing is that they all came out in the evening. Uh, they refer to the Flintstones as the first one to be in prime time, but the Huckleberry Hound Show, the Quick Drama Graw, Yogi Bear, were all on about 7.30 at night. The Jetsons only had 24 original episodes, and I think they were right up against uh, the Walt Disney, Wonderful World of Walt Disney. That's right, and they, they just clobbered us. But why it took 22 years to do any more? I, I know that, that Hanna-Barbera, every year they would submit... You know, the Jetsons. And it was like, you know, like a, some little wallflower that never got to dance. Mm-hmm. And uh, finally, uh, they worked out the deal with the syndication company. And from what I hear, they were really going over like a house of fire. Animation's one of those things, too. And many of the studios haven't turned anything out. I don't think Warner Brothers has turned any cartoons out uh, for for years. Walter Lance, you, I know you worked with Walter Lance, and we've interviewed him a number of times on the show. Oh, yeah, I worked with Walter for at least 15 15- I don't think his studio's turned out anything lately, have they? No, nothing new. Because uh, another character I did for that, uh, that, uh, see, the thing with Walter, it was so good. He's the only one I ever worked for in theatrical animation who gave me credit. Paul Fries and Dale McKinnon and I and his wife, Gracie, did all the characters. And, uh, I, and, and Gracie and did Woody. And be a credit, like Voices by, you know, Gracie Lance and Doss <laughs> Butler. <laughs> so people knew. But one of my favorite characters on that was Chili Willie. And it's probably the highest voice I ever did, and he only had a voice about the last two years of his existence. Prior to that, he's always been mute, you know. Mm-hmm. But Chili Willie had a very, very high voice, and he's 
lived up in the north, and that's why they call him Chili, Willie. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Do you get red in the face when you get up that high, Dawes? Or? <laughs> no. No, you see, I really have a singer's range. I'm not a singer. But, I, no, that was that was true voice. I wasn't in falsetto. And, uh, mm -hmm. and then I could go fairly deep, too, which is in the chest. You know what I mean? And that's about the range. So that basically, if I could carry a tune, I wouldn't be a bad singer. No, not at all. In fact, I guess a falsetto voice would be like that of uh, of Mickey Mouse. Walt Disney did yeah, it. Yeah, well, that's right. Falsetto is more like that, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, kind of a cheat. So you get into, hello, Minnie. One hello, of those. Minnie. Yeah, <laughs> one of those kind of things. Well, this is absolutely fascinating, and I know you're a busy man. I, I appreciate you taking the time to be with us. Well, but, listen, it's, it's my pleasure because uh, uh, it's almost, I feel like a, a knight on a big white horse. We can just get comedy back into cartoons and and touching and to have kids see characters that like each other and have adventures together and, and it's not all based on outer space the jetsons i mean it makes a joke out of outer space in effect they get fun out of it mm -hmm. you know i have some jetson questions after we let you go i'm going to ask some jetson questions and bring back some some memories for some folks some okay. great jetson trivia okay. but, but that is on again and people can catch it uh by checking the the tv listings well they're on they should be on five days a week Mm -hmm. uh, and it varies in different uh, cities. Out here, it's on at three o'clock in the afternoon, and it varies. But uh, it's uh, and then and then the uh, the uh, Yogi Bear thing is on Sunday morning. With okay. Two other shows. Now, are those new cartoons too? Yeah, Papa's is one. It's a bunch of little bears, and then uh, uh, Gal Galtar and the uh, and the Golden Lance. That's that's more of a you know adventure type thing. Okay. And Yogi's usually in the middle. Mm -hmm. Which isn't a bad place to be. It's warmer. No. Just keep your eyes open for the Hanna Barbera characters and uh, the work of Dawes Butler. Dawes, thank you very much. Well, it was my pleasure, you know. Say, uh, say so long to your butler for us. Oh, I will, yeah. Oh, uh, Percival? Yes? You want to say goodbye? Yes, this is Percival Pickles. Uh, I hope you enjoyed him. I don't really enjoy him all that much. <laughs> but, <laughs> um,. Uh, it was a pleasure having him talk to you. He'll be, he'll be w worth living with for the rest of the day. All right. We hope we've made his day. Thank you for putting him on, Percival. <laughs> yeah, well, well, <laughs> I got my my own life to live with Percival, but it's been a ball talking to you guys. Okay. Thanks, Dawes. Okay, Dawes. Keep up the good work. All the best to you. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs> Kellogg's, your best choice in cereals. The best to you each morning brings you... Ralph? Yogi Bear. Oh, that was fun. It's, uh, we're a little late. I apologize for that. 10.33 in the morning. Let's get you up to date. 47 degrees. This report presented in part by On the Wall, Wallpaper and Window Treatment Shop. L.P. Phillips, WJBC News. You know, over the years, I've had a chance to talk with different people involved in the animation process, the process of making cartoons. Jim McDonald, the head sound effects man for Walt Disney Studios, and we talked with uh, Mel Blanc, and now we've had Dodge Butler on. And the remarkable thing is they all have this great admiration for each other. They respect each other, kind of like you respect me. They don't think much of each other? <laughs> hey, boo-boo. <laughs> Smarter than the average Baron Jump. Isn't he terrific? He is. I like I like listening. Oh. I think it's funny when you actually hear the guys who do the cartoon characters talking to you. I think that's great. Yeah, and they describe these characters. They know what side of the bed they got up in the morning and everything else. The personalities. You know? That's, really that's kind of neat how they work yeah. those into there. Yep. I have some... Uh, Jetson Trivia in just a moment. 33 years in Bristol Mall. Well, Jetson Trivia. Question number one for a jug of cider from the Apple Barn is, what company was Spacely Space Sprocket's biggest rival? That's easy. Don't tell it. I'm not going to tell it. Tell I, I know it, though. Somebody can answer that. We have a uh, jug of cider for him. I have a peck of apples. Or somebody, if they can tell me the city the Jetsons live in. 
Do you know that one? Oh, but up, but up, but up, but up, but up. No, I don't. And uh, how about this one? Rosie's nickname for Elroy. Can you answer? I think any, I know that one. Any of those questions? Eight two nine two three four five is my number. Five. Thank you, Mom. You're welcome.